it's uh, one of the one of the kind of fun parts about uh, moving around like I do and changing and, and moving from job to job or moving from state to state is all the different people you get to meet. And uh, every once in a while, I get to meet someone who I just think found their spot and does a really great job and is kind of a perfect fit for what they do. And uh, when I met David Griffiths, the Chelan County Treasurer, I felt like I came across one of those people again. Uh, I've never once had a conversation with him where he wasn't all about how can I help you. Um, everything's about how can we make this better and uh, um, how can I how can we figure out ways to help the school districts. Uh, when uh, um, when the, the ledge was running long, was that a year, not last year, but the year before, and we're starting to wonder about apportionment funding, I called all the treasurers and uh, I asked them if there's anything they could do to help their schools. And I got a really mixed bag of results and, and Dave's response was simply, uh, just let me know and we'll do whatever we can to help. And so when I did, uh, we had the assessor come by uh, last business manager forum from Douglas County and I've had some really neat interactions with those folks too. I thought what a great opportunity would be to see if I could get Dave to come by and uh, just kind of do a conversation with you all on the business manager and the treasurer relationship. So uh, sitting in the back of the room here joining us today is uh, Mr. David Griffiths and it sounds like he used to be a CPA so I want to introduce him <laughs> as that. Uh, and and uh, I've never been a CPA simply because of Gatsby. So, <laughs> so, um, and uh, how many of the folks in here do we have from, uh, thank you very much for coming, from Marshallan County? I know the ESD here is too. Um, yeah, so we got quite a bit of your constituency okay. here. So I'll let you just take it over. If there's anything you need, you just let us know. Okay. I have no slides. Yeah. So <laughs> there will be no technical difficulties with this other than <laughs> what I do to myself. <laughs> kind of lay out my notes which are just exactly what you would probably expect from me <laughs> and that's pretty disjointed uh, what happened here I, I had a nice little agenda that I all had laid out here and then I immediately started writing uh, stuff about cheap cruises and <laughs> destinations I wanted to go to. Uh, it, it is an absolute mess. <laughs> I, I do want to really, this is probably one of the most important uh, opportunities I have ever had, actually, and I'm saying that with sincerity, um, because we and when I say we, um, I'm going to be using that in terms of me and you, and then I'm also going to be using it in terms of me and the other county treasurers. And um, the county uh, treasurer is always, he, he has, by default, he's the treasurer for almost every municipal entity unless the statutes call for that entity or that uh, municipal entity to have it, its own treasurer or the ability for them to ask to be their own treasurer and the county treasurer lets them do it. So you can have an irrigation district if they're large enough and they uh, get in a dispute with the county treasurer, they can ask to be their own treasurer. And oftentimes because there is a dispute, they let them, but more often than not, they're for some reason we, we don't give that permission. There's been, um, I've been county treasurer now since 1998, and I think I've heard a couple different times where different school districts on the west side, uh, and we're talking large school districts, have proposed and, and argued uh, for legislation that would allow them to become their own county treasurer because they didn't like the way they were treated by the county treasurer. Um, I don't really have any experience with that relationship at all. The first time I heard it, if I had known there was a group like this, I would have immediately wanted to come out here and talk to you. I come back to my office, I forget about it, and I get kind of isolated, and I don't ever hear any, uh, excuse the term, complaints you know, bitches and moans. <laughs> so I just go on about my 
work because my office has, a, I, I hope, a really good relationship with all the school districts and very seldom do I hear any complaints. In fact, in the 18 or 19 years, I've only ever had one complaint and it was a, a reporting complaint over something I had no control over because the reports were coming out of our system and they didn't like the way the debits and credits were displaying. Um, and, and that's okay. That, I, I, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as I kind of ramble on here, but I go backwards to this relationship and you guys are a significant partner, huge partner with the county. Um, you have a lot of money rolling through our accounts at any given point. There's a lot of transactions and um, so it behooves us to be uh, aware of each other. Now whether you want me here or not, now that I know that you meet, I'm going to make it a, a, an obligation of mine to come here at least once a year so that I can stand up here and say, are you having any problems? Is there something you want us to do? Is there something that I need to talk to my other treasurers about? Is there something that the state legislature needs to do as far as that concerns our little area? Um, which, you know, I can't do state funding for school districts. I can't do anything like that. But there are little nuances that um, perhaps we can put some legislative power to uh, through the state, through the county treasures and enact some changes. And all you have to do is let me know that. I mean, I, obviously I have the Chelan County School Districts that know and communicate with my office all the time as well as the ESD. But I, I'm willing to take calls from any county that has an issue that they think I can help with. Um, and. So along that line, uh, I'm absolutely positive that Leah McCormick up in Okanagan County and Nona Haberman up in Douglas County would share my same sentiments. They're wonderful people, they're easy to work with, and uh, they, they will bend over backwards in every instance to help you. Anybody notice that I left one? <laughs> 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 yeah, we noticed. Yeah, that wasn't intentional. <laughs> Are you from Grant County? I am. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, before that goes any further, because this no. will kind of be a thread that kind of winds in this, I'm going to tell you right away that uh, Daryl Pheasant is the treasurer in Grant County, and the rest of them may never have met Daryl, and that a lot of this, when they have a chance to meet him, um, they'll kind of understand this, but <laughs> Daryl is the first person I call whenever I have a problem. <laughs> whenever I want information, he's always available to me. He okay. always has an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, years of working with Daryl, and I talk to him every other day. He talk, he calls me. Uh, it kind of tells me that it's keeping Alzheimer's away from me. So. Um, <laughs> makes me think a lot because he's challenging you. The problem is that he sometimes he just gets he knows every RCW and he by and he just gets so fixated on issues that it's the issue not the solution that he's after. But Daryl's got a, a really kind heart and he knows how to do a lot of stuff that if we make him our ally we have a really strong ally and I have him as an ally. So I can say that we in the ESD here locally, we have strong uh, county treasurers that are willing to really support you in anything that you ever ask for. Now what would that all entail? Well, the areas that I'll, I'll briefly talk about that uh, you probably don't want to hear about and why I don't have any slides is because you probably immediately start falling asleep, but they're, they're the banking services, the reports that we issue, and then finally our investments. That's what I'm, the areas that I'm going to kind of touch on a little bit. And um, I kind of probably should have started this with investments because that's a big one, but I want to shove it off to the back. And the, the reports, it really doesn't have a lot of stuff to say in there. They're kind of confusing. And the banking services, that's kind of like uh, 
semi-important to me and Trish. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about banking services and we'll talk a little bit about, the first thing is the warrants, the changes. Uh, what I'm, I'm gonna have to be sort of careful. You have to remember we have four different counties and we have four different accounting systems in each one of those counties. And mine's the best. <laughs> so what I talk about is not what anybody else might get or have available. And they're also governed by their banking contracts. So each one of us, for different reasons, have, uh, and they're legitimate, have different, different banks. And what those financial institutions can offer or provide those county treasures dictates a little bit about how the ESD is handling transactions with those districts, so in those counties. But in, in Chelan County, we have, um, we have Key Bank, of course, and the biggest change that we have uh, is with regard, well, the first change that we have is with regard to warrants. Uh, uh, this wasn't the first thing that I changed, but we did change this. When, when you issue warrants, you, uh, I think if the recommend recommendation, if we had to, you and I had to draw some recommendations, we would say use payee pay. In other words, you're gonna send a file to the bank, it's gonna tell them the name and date and the amount. That's payee pay, so that they can check against the payee when they're cashing checks or warrants. I can get that, and I gotta clip the end of my tongue off real quick. And we'll come back to that, the difference between a check and a warrant. When we're talking warrants here now for, for a moment. So, in the old days, the way you added internal control was go to a two-party warrant. So you had to have two signatures, difficult to do, um, of course, you could do it with some different methods that we use when we print the checks and that sort of worked for us. Um, but those checks were easy to counterfeit and were probably the number one area of fraud. When you went to positive pay, it required people to do uh, alter a check format and it was a little bit more difficult when the bank had a list of who the checks were issued to. What we did when we started because of some of our ACH transactions uh, in Chelan County, we went to payee positive pay. So what we require is the name, the date, and the amount all on the same uh, line item. So when they're checking, they're not just looking for date and amount like positive pay, they're looking for the payee as well. So we thought, well, this was a real positive thing if we could get a bank and when we switched banks from Bank America and went to Key Bank, that was one of the things they assured us they could do. And now we needed a, um, a file from the ESD that had all three of the items in it that we needed, the date, the payee, and the amount. But we also needed to know, because there's so seven school districts. We also needed to know the routing number, the bank routing number for each one of the school districts, which was an item you didn't have in your, in your database. So we designed what we call the Cleminator, which is a little piece of software that we use all the time now that resorts the information that we're given so we can order it in the same way that the bank requested and it adds your bank routing number to it. And that file goes to the bank and the bank gets it and immediately, anytime a check is presented to them, it, it goes into their system and checks that check against that, that file and it's actually turned back at the, at the bank. It doesn't even come through the system so we can see it. How well does that work? Well, I thought it would be a long time before I saw how good that system was. In the very first week we had it, we had a young man up in uh, Manson who had gotten a check, a warrant, and he, his father was not in the office, so he decided that he needed to be paid, so he changed the name on that warrant, 
and tried to cash it uh, in a, a, a bank up there in Chelan. And that same day, he had a call from somebody, not us, but uh, it caught that counterfeit check, which it became when he altered it, the same day he tried to present it. And it never even entered into his account. So we've had literally probably 100 checks that we've caught over the last couple of years using that system. So we are big proponents of pay e positive pay. It is awesome. Um, our ACH transactions, and some of this um, is a little deeper than what you really need to know on some of this, but we have ACH, we put ACH blocks on every single one of our accounts. So no ACH transaction can come through any of our accounts except for our ACH platform. So I think every county is doing that the same way. And if they're not, they better be, because I, I harp at them at every meeting what we go to with county treasurers. You need to have that ACH account separate. It has to be a zero balance account, and we have to move money out onto that platform in the amount of the ACH transactions for that file, that ACH <coughs> file to clear. Um, the way this works, it requires us to have that file submitted three days prior to the release date, which is a little bit long, and there's been some times when it's been difficult to get some of our districts to comply. Um, they've all been able to do it. Um, what usually complicates it is some of the holidays that we have, where we have a little difficulty uh, swinging around the holiday. But so far, it's been working out real well. The three days is necessary because the bank requires us two days, and um, that allows us time to get the money onto the platform and the amount of that file so they can check it against and make sure that the two clear. If for some reason there's a, a change between the time you submitted the file and then you realize, oh, I need to change somebody's amount, and you submit the file amended that has a different amount, it's gonna, it's gonna come back immediately. It's happened, uh, and that, that's a good thing because it shows us that the systems work. Uh, we're real diligent about these ACH transactions because they're, they're uh, a little bit scary for some of us that have had some experience with them. One of the things that's happened in this particular area is if you're, you get any email notices or um, notifications from any of the NACHA group or uh, even some of the financial institutions, they have passed legislation that now allows them to process ACH transactions same day. Uh, my recommendation to the county treasurers in total and obviously here for sure we will never see same-day ACH transactions. We just cannot clear transactions that fast here. We're going to stay with the three days. It just cannot be done in the same day. Now, how, how does that happen? Well, uh, I'm going to just kind of go backwards. And normally, in a business entity, which we are not, that ACH file or ACH transaction in a business has to be tied to a checking account. You can't submit it onto a separate platform that has no cash. It has to have a banking account tied to it by federal law. So what that ACH transaction is doing is very much like your debit card when you go into a, um, a coffee place. Usually you, you pay and if you, it's a debit card, by the time you get to your office it's already cleared You've been, your bank account's been reduced by $5.36. That's how fast those transactions work. And we are not going to see those in our environment. Okay? If you need to have something done fast, uh, we have ways to do it, and we can do it with um, one off. If it's more than that, we we'll probably won't be of much help. In Chelan County, we also offer ACH pulls as opposed to what you're talking about in payroll is an ACH push, 
where we're pushing the amount out. Um, in some instances, and in a number of your cases, we, we use ACH pulls, and this would mostly be done with state agencies that are uh, requesting that we have wire transfers to them. We'll do those with an ACH pull. So we set the amount out there. We tell them uh, on, the, on our secure website where that amount is. They come out and they pull it off of it. And we get notice that they're out there asking for it, and then we okay it. So we can initiate some one-off. Uh, payments like that. We also have available our wire transfers, which we've had always in the past. So if you have bond payments, for example, we'll do those with a wire transfer. Wire transfers normally are not used in, except in commercial practices where it's from bank to bank. So we, we offer those services. I think every county pretty much is the same. Um, we don't have, a, we don't have any problems uh, right now. Um, with our warrants, we again are using the payee positive pay in every single instance. Uh, every one of our accounts, and I probably have a hundred of them, um, we use ACH, and every single uh, entity has ACH payroll that I'm aware of, um, except maybe for the smallest irrigation districts. Um, the way we have we structured it so that. I've got the ACH files out here at Cashmere Valley Bank for the school, and others are in different institutions, so that's worked out good to separate those so that they're not commingled and um, potentially interfering with each other um, in an event of a problem. And. I know there's probably something more I want to harp on you about, but um, I'm not going to. I want to just sort of remind you of what we um, should be doing more of with our everybody that we work with in the treasurer's office in Chelan County. And that is, in your school districts, if you have not had programs about um, fishing and plishing scams and you're allowing your some of your employees to go out on the internet or Facebook you need to think proactively and initiate some programs that you can offer to your employees about how to identify when um, a malicious software is being sent to them there's easy ways to tell whether where that's coming from and what's going to happen to your uh, computer if you download something that looks like it's coming from um, any place that they might normally get an email from. I, I can duplicate any single website that um, that's out there and make it look like that email is coming from that location. And that is a real danger. It's probably the number one threat that we have right now. Uh, if it doesn't come in the form of a malicious uh, a malicious attack on the computer itself, then it might come in the form of a freezing up your accounts and holding you hostage. And you might have to pay what's called ransomware, or ransom for it, unlock your computer. So you need to think of positively about offering training. Uh, we require it in the county for every county employee, and I, I wish the schools did the same. We, in Chelan County, um, all our reports, when we do Eden, our reports are all put out on the internet. And so our school districts uh, all access all their, uh, e uh, their reports right off of the Eden system. Um, so they, out there is all the issued and redeemed and outstanding warrant registers. They can pick those up and uh, they can go down through them or not as their case may be. They're they're pretty straightforward uh, reports that come off of there. Uh, the front one that they'll see every time for each fund will show you the beginning balance, how many warrants uh, were issued, how many were redeemed, and, uh, how many were voided. And those are all available at any given point in time. They can go out and take a look at those. Uh, we try to do as much of our reporting that way as we possibly can. It doesn't always work that way. Um, our 
I probably got on a bit of a soapbox with regard to reports. The only thing that I, um, my staff was coaching me to talk about was <laughs> an area that I'm going to kind of, kind of stay away from because <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit scared of it uh, after having listened to your previous program. And, uh, of course, this has to do with our, our, uh, our state reporting. Um, this is probably the number one complaint that the treasurers have whenever they have a meeting. It's about uh, OSDI or whatever it is, the state school system report that we have to get. Each county has a little bit different way of getting that information onto the form. In our case, it turns out to be extremely uh, manual. Well, we get a report out of our system, then we have to go into a spreadsheet and we have to put it into the spreadsheet and then we send you the output of that spreadsheet and then you take the information and you put it into your system. It's just like three times here, everybody's putting the same information in to get the same result. So our big push um, won't be solved at this level, but what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to generate, just like we do with all our other districts, a single report that might look like an Excel spreadsheet to some, <coughs> using Crystal Report, would look just like a Crystal Report to somebody that was using that to read it, but that Excel spreadsheet uh, could be converted to CMS or any other type of system and transferred to the state. and and it could come through or would have to come through the ESD so if we could get everybody to submit those the same way ESD could then just combine those files and transmit them electronically without having to spend repetitive tasks re-putting everything in again that we've already put in a second time off our report uh, is that ever going to happen I'm setting that way over here to the right and it's probably never going to see the light of day again but <laughs> That was that's a real push on our. Well, it's office. it's it's a conversation that the ESD fiscal officers have been having with OSPI and the state too, because it really is truly a redundancy. Um, there's no sense we we get the information from you and then we go into an OSPI system and put it in. Why not just cut us out altogether and just have the treasurer just directly put it? Just it's such a waste of time. And, and I'm sure if I, I dug down, be done with the file. I'm sure if I dug down deep enough, they'd have an answer for why it does this way. But um, but it's been a conversation we've been having at a, at a regular level as well. So you're not the only ones on that front from there. Well, if you get to the point where you're going to have it again, I want to be at the meeting. <laughs> you don't have to introduce me, but I'll, 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 I'll be laying in the weeds waiting for that. Um, we talked a little bit about the banking services. We talked a little bit about some of the reports that we issued uh, and put out there on the website, and then. Uh, we'll talk just for a second about the one that probably is the, the big one. And, and this has to do with uh, pooling and investing. Um, and each county does it a little bit different. Um, in the state of Washington, you have the counties divided uh, not only by size and geographic area, but also because of their size it pretty much mandates how they're how they're handling um, investments and when I talk about investments in counties we're talking about either non pooling counties or we're talking about pooling counties and pooling counties are the ones that where they take everybody's money commingle it um, and invest it and then take the return and distribute it back out equally to the how the investment was pooled in the old days um, the pool, the pool, if you will, was very much like how Okanagan County is presently doing it. We took the money down, all the money down to the bank. And in our case, at the time, it was Bank America, and we bought uh, five jumbo CDs, and then we, they had a one-month duration on them, 30 days. At the end of 30 days, those jumbo CDs with interest would come back. We take the interest that was earned, and we'd spread it apart according to how many how much money each uh, district had in the in that in the, that basket of uh, CDs um, 
it immediately raises the question why five CDs there is no magic number it could have been four could have been eight uh, I think it's five just because that that's what Okanagan County does I mean they could do it in six they could do it in four it doesn't make any difference we did it the same way uh, unfortunately w when I finally pass something out that you can get in your hand you're going to see that the interest rate that you earn on these there is no interest rate it just has disappeared I mean this was a viable source of income to some extent for a lot of districts not only school districts but all districts including the county but um, when the interest rate hit the bottom now our biggest fear is we're hoping it doesn't go negative that's, um, that's actually happening uh, it is a bit of a fear so there really wasn't any um, I mean it didn't make any difference to us and when I say us I'm talking about the county of Chelan whether I used a, a basket of CDs or whether I just put it all in the state pool and then let the state pool take care of it and that's what we elected to do so all our all our money is for you invest it if you invest it and you don't direct otherwise it goes into the state pool in that amount and you get your interest at whatever the state pool is paying off <coughs> um, and the state pool rate is just about the same rate as what you would get for a 30-day CD sometimes it's a little bit higher like it is today if you ask the same program at the last Thursday, it would be a little bit lower. But what's it sitting at about now? About four, four tenths. Four tenths. So that's what your CD, 30 day CD rate is sitting at. Your pool rate, it, that's 0.04. Right, zero, zero, <laughs> Three, actually. It's way less. Huh? You're doing great with state. Yes. And then the Okanagan's uh, pool. What's she at? She's point three eight five or zero. No, he's saying four tenths of one percent. So you still have to put the two yeah, zeros in front. Okay, yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, no. So she's no, just she's just slightly yeah. Oh yeah, no, she's no, in no. about three point eight five. She yeah. is barely below it actually. Okay. And, and there's a, there is a there's a five. I'm not being critical of that by the way. Um, she does all right with that um, you know she's netted it down by her fee uh, which is 0 0.05 I think a, a point oh, you know 0 0.005 so we're talking pretty small numbers <laughs> you got to have a major amount of money in here like a school bond proceeds from Cashmere Valley Bank you know mm -hmm. uh, our Cashmere School District got 30 some thousand dollars tucked in there well they're earning some interest on it they're also though and we come back to that but these bond rates I'm going to get real tongue-tight when I start talking about them because they're they're de minimis is what they are uh, and that's one of the reasons we took the lazy way to do this in Chelan County and we just used the state pool but it doesn't eliminate you you have the right to go to the county treasurer in Chelan County anyway and Nona does the same thing in Douglas County and ask them to invest in an alternative investment for a longer period of time and you can but then you risk the cash flow issue so we would ask that you plan out your cash flow and then you call us and you tell us I have this amount of money that I want to invest and I'd like to invest it for a little longer term and what kind of investments can I get for this and give me a couple alternatives and I can get you a lot better rate what we have done and I'm I'm positive that Nona is doing this as well and I can't speak for Leah uh, Daryl doesn't do it but we will for example we'll quote you the rate on a three-year bond a three-year federal federally insured bond and in the event that you had to sell that at the end of two years you'd normally you'd have a, probably a loss on it when you sold it but we'll hold it and we'll buy it from you so we'll guarantee your 
your interest or your earnings on that so there is no loss now we do that because well one we want to be your partners and, and two we would be buying that type of instrument anyway so and it's in our name to start with um, it's your investment but we're holding it for you and what we will end up doing is just clearing it immediately and providing you with the cash flow with it but you have to you have to be aware that when you make that commitment for that cash flow you're at risk so it could be that things change uh, and the county can't buy it then you're gonna have to eat the loss and I can't say that it would you know without knowing exactly what we're talking about if we're talking about ten million dollars versus five hundred thousand obviously there's, there's a bigger loss involved why would there ever be a loss well if I'm buying something at one and a half percent right now yield and the rate goes up what's going to happen is the person that wants to buy that or if I had to sell it on the market and it had that low a yield and the yield had jumped up to three percent they're going to make you take a discount on that or in other words you won't get all your money so that the yield on a one 1.5 percent bond equals what you could get on the open market at a three point that makes sense so you get less of your money back and then your your school board's yelling at you <laughs> so you want to be real careful with these you want to plan out your cash flow it's not it's not impossible to do I brought copies of I, I mean all my school districts are very good about this I hope I brought it and I, I do I, I just um, is cashmere in the yes I would love to have <laughs> but, I would love to have some guidance yes <laughs> oh no you're great you're golden. <laughs> I, I, I actually I brought one sheet that I'll just pass around I mean, awesome. uh, to just to give you an example of what what happens here um, and this was not that long ago it was back in July uh, we asked uh, and oftentimes we don't get because all of us get a little bit complacent in this area if you know that it's in the pool and nobody's harping at you about rate and yield uh, you just leave it there and you get your money and that's what it is and you call the treasurer and you complain and we tell you hey the rates in the toilet we can't get you better and then everything goes on and you know the money's secure security 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 that's all you care about your the taxpayers are not paying taxes to us any of us to go out and do investments they're giving us money to go out and build things and do things and provide services and we don't want to chase yield it's a bad bad ploy and it's easy to do and what happens is when you get counties that are close together and they communicate between through different groups because they have members that county is getting a higher rate of yield than I'm getting and you're not happy with that but there may be some risks that that county is taking or putting on the board that you might not be comfortable with so it's all about risk the more risk you take the higher the yield you're only getting half a percent and you have this much risk and you get you're getting one and a half percent you got that much risk so be comfortable where you're at be comfortable with your cash flow plan what I have uh, just an example of when I pass this around you can see on this that cashmere school district what we require them to do is send us an email telling us how much they want to invest we we won't do it over the phone they have to do it in writing they obviously uh, they put it in an Excel spreadsheet they show the beginning fund balance they show all the way down to their ending balance and then they out of their ending balance they show how much of each one of those funds they want to have invested so th this is my rock star here <laughs> um, if you could do that and you had the ability then to go one step further in each one of these funds on a quick Excel spreadsheet and you could tell me well for example when you look at this you're going to see the capital project fund has 12 million dollars in it the question is 
Are you going to need it in October, November, December, January, next July? If you could run that out, you could get a lot better yield than what you're getting in the state pool for portions of it. <coughs> now what we want to be extremely careful of and what uh, a good county treasurer would do, uh, we would look at that and we would say capital project fund, that's probably a bond issue. And I want to be real careful with that investment because I don't want to bump up against arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Arbitrage is going to create a, a ne real negative connotations and a lot of additional work and additional cost. And what that is, is you can't borrow at a lower rate and take the money and invest it at a higher rate and earn money without paying it back to the government. They come and take it from you. So I don't want to go there. But we will watch and work with you on this. And um, you, you can just take a look at this. This is how we do this in uh, Chelan County. And we, part of the thing is we like to use, um, this is, we try to go out of what's called, and, and Trish could back me up on this, we try to go out of band on as many things as we can. So we don't do things on just a one a phone call, for example. Um, we try to have a phone call and an email. So we've got more than one type of verification on any kind of transaction. It might even require some board approval. So we would have a third piece of uh, uh, indemnification for us when we do some of these things. Uh, in this case, what we would do is pick the investments that we would probably choose. I think all of this went, was split up and went into the state pool, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which is a good thing. How am I doing on time? You're doing great. We've got like 20 minutes or two minutes. <laughs> um, we will now go to the uh, these I've got here. So, so just real yeah. quick. Yeah. What other options do people have besides the pool dollars or the state pool? What are you are you seeing other investment types in your county? Yeah, yeah. Like what? What are the other types of investments? The highest possible rate I can get you. Legally. You're you're going to get a pass out here, and uh, treasurer's got less restrictions. How that's going? How I'm going to answer this is uh, on the the front page of this is going to be. Um, I think it is a summary page from the state pool, and on the second page is a, is a list of the investments in the state thing. pool. The same thing. Yep, it is. It's just a double-sided. You know, I'm not even <laughs> sure what I have. Yeah. Yeah. Two. What did I have? Yeah. You need one back to you? There you go. Yeah. Okay. I passed double sided. Sorry. Yeah. 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 You'll just notice on the back of this. This is basically a list of every type of investment that you can possibly invest on. So you're, you're not restricted to um, any one particular type of federal industry, but th these may not be appropriate for you in your instance and probably aren't. And the reason for that, the reason that I'm saying that, uh, and we're going to come to some in interesting points in this, and I don't want you carrying all this information back to Carol and go in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, go carry it on, you know. It won't work. He's a good friend. He'll be mad at me. But I'm about to show you how you get in trouble uh, with these. Um, the first thing. We'll, we'll look here for a second at the back sheet, which is the information that's on here, the type of investments that they're in, and then a in, on this particular sheet, and, and Daryl gives out this same information. You don't mind if I sit there? Um, and it'll, it'll show you the type of investment and how it's weighted, not necessarily uh, um, well, it's got the dollar amounts, and there's some information in here, and then on the bottom is a little LGI pool rate. And you can see what your problem with the LGIP right now is that rate is flat. I mean, it is not going anywhere. It is down the bottom. And we'll come circle back around that 
uh, and talk a bit, a bit about that in a minute, but uh, they're investing in the same type of investments that any county treasurer can, can invest in with a couple exceptions. I mean, there are a few other things that we have available for us. Most county treasurers are pretty much down there in the U.S. treasuries. Uh, we do a lot of agencies too, but uh, we're, we're down there casting around looking for the highest possible yield that we can get. What's happening right now is most of these yields that we get have callable provisions in them. Um, and what ends up happening if you try to get a three-year instrument is it'll have a one-year call provision in it. And if the rate has gone down, they're going to call it. And now you got to go out and invest in something else. And it's just, it's not good, but that's the way it is. Um, and we'll show you on the, when you turn it over on the front page, you're going to see the yield curve on a, th this yield curve was actually generated 9-9. Uh, nine, nine. The one that's in the faint line was uh, a week prior to that was 9-2. If you look over here in on your left hand side, you can see the bar, the axis is uh, zero, 0 is the bottom. If it was below that, it would be negative and we'd have to pay them to take the investment. But it's down there at about a point, uh, a point three. Uh, between three and four down in there and we're looking at the way it spreads out across it is it's going monthly one year two years ten years and 30 all the way out to 30 years and you can see that the yield is going as the longevity increases the yield gets higher it's going up so if I want to compete with the state pool and I want to beat the state pool and we know that the state pool has basically same day liquidity. If you call me you, and before 10, I can have your money to you that afternoon or the next day at the most. But if I wanted to beat that state pool rate, the only thing I have to do looking at this is increase my longevity. Can go out to three months, one year, two years, five years. So when you say that Daryl, for example, in Grand County has got a pool that he's off operating and he's paying 1.67%, which is astronomical to what we're getting, what does that tell you on this? It tells you that the majority of his money is out here on this yield curve quite a ways. Probably a lot more longer out here than what you're comfortable with. And Daryl has the ability to be comfortable with that, and he doesn't get in trouble with it. But if you're a school district like Kashmir, and you're in a, group, a pool, and you've got the county and maybe the city of Wenatchee and Wenatchee School District in there you know that they're 10 times larger than you are and if one of them has demands on that pool immediately what's going to happen is it's going to suck all the available cash out of there and that may cause the treasurer to have to sell something at a loss which is going to be things start cascading real fast um, no these are not bad investments by the way all of these are guaranteed. Um, well, actually, that's in their, their, their agencies, so they're not necessarily, they're, they're not guaranteed by the federal government, right. they're just agency debentures. But they are, they, they are. They. Well, yes, it's arguable, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I could have treasuries in there too. Though. Right, I mean, right. So, just, now, I'm gonna tell you that, and this is where I start walking out on the limb a little bit here, the rates are so terrible now that what happens with people, the pooling counties, and I'm not saying this negatively at all for the pooling counties, but when they start chasing yield, um, they're expected to kind of continue to perform the way, at a certain level. And it gets harder and harder to do the way things have been building here. And what they did was not 
within months, uh, they passed a piece of legislation that allowed them to go outside of the normally prescribed type of investments and start investing in some private equity. So now you can be buying bonds of General Motors, for example, that might be yielding a lot higher rate than what a federal instrument might be yielding. Um, I'm not at all comfortable with that, and I'm glad to see in my state pool they don't have any of that. They have had it in the past. They don't have it now. I don't know that I have the, I want to say that there's any treasurer that has the ability to kind of be out there doing what they're doing when they're starting to invest in the open market for, uh, in bonds. Um, they're going to use the argument that they're all in the highest credit rating. But when you start looking at some other things going on in the country, I don't know that that's where you want your money. So I'm, it's easy for me to say, we're using the state pool. And we're, we know we're going to get our money back. We can get it back tomorrow. Uh, there's nothing at risk in this. Our yield, we didn't get very much yield last year. We're not getting very much yield right now, our, although our state pool rate is going up. So, questions? <laughs> Daryl does a good job, by the way. So, I mean, because to me, here's, here's what I keep getting. It's, and it's not even about the duration, which concerns me significantly, and it concerns me more significantly about a year like this, <laughs> where there's a very good potential that the legislature might end up going well past its its point, its uh, the year end point, and that might kill our apportionment payments for several months. And so there's there's the fear in my mind about, because the apportionment payments are a significant revenue source to the county. So my, my, my actually bigger question on that front is, oh. do, they, do, they, do the treasurers who do this, are they required to file any sort of a longevity plan? Like, because right now Daryl has all this, and other there's other. Don't get me wrong, there are other treasurers that do this as well. Yeah, there but are. they have, but they have this, and as long as they're there, they know exactly what they're doing. What happens if they don't get reelected into office? That next person who comes in, okay, and, and then and then it, it also does this committing future, right. com committing future funds because you can't unwind these. I mean, without taking a hit on them. Yeah, you I guess so. I guess, could you speak to that at all? Yeah, I can. not it's not going to come out pretty, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that's what I wanted. I, yeah. I, intend, I mean, I've told it to Daryl in the past. And um, of the pooling counties, and I'm going to say there's probably 12 pooling counties. I, that's just a guess on my part. In King County's one, so don't, yeah, I mean, is they, 27 they, of them are not they, They've already proven the fault. They've already defaulted on some of their yeah. funds. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, yes. They've got the, they've got the, yeah, the well, Daryl did too, but he, didn't lose any money and he ended up it all ended up paying out right. and everything was just fine he was accused of it but he had the it was all yeah. good yeah but mostly it was all good because it, certain bonds got called and right. he had liquidity all of a sudden so everything worked out right where Daryl is um, and I've got to be real careful I mean I'm way out because I've got some <laughs> Grant County people in here but Daryl's all by himself mm -hmm. yeah it's right. just Daryl Every other pooling county has hired professional staff. So regardless of who the treasurer is, those people are going to be there for a long period of time. So, and that begs to ask the question as a business manager, when you place investments, you need to understand the investment program that you're going into and who's running it, how long they're going to be there, what type of investments they're, they're in. Um, you know, it would never hurt to take uh, and go out on the website and get the state pool investment thing quarterly and run it into your school board as part of your one of your meetings with them and say oh and by the way our investments are at the state pool and here's the state pool report that's part of the documents you give them for questions um, you need to ask those questions though, about who's running the pool and what's their expertise which brings to our uh, another issue because we've asked that question ourselves as county treasurers and we now require 
continuing education uh, of all pooling counties. We require full disclosure of all types of instruments and certain other requirements uh, that go, you know, as for example, duration. You'll notice in this instrument, this document right here, the most important number on here for my, in my mind, is the one that's buried off that right here. It doesn't really tell you anything. But their duration in here is 35 days. That's the average duration, which means that of their $11 billion, half of it would be come up due in 35 days. Daryl's average average duration on his 19 million or 30 million, whatever it is, in his pool is probably seven years. You know, I mean, yeah. ah, that's, just not, that's not right. I'm way overstated. That's about that, six and a half. Yeah, I'm not. I'm <laughs> just, I'm, that that wasn't. That isn't. It, it isn't really important as long as you know that the cash flow isn't going to demand that you sell those equities early. The state has to have a real short duration on theirs because you can have your money within one business day. So they know that there's money rolling all the time in that pool. We've asked the state pool to start another an, another LGIP that will be midterm or what we'll call long term. We want to have two pools. We want to have the short one and we want to have something that's longer. If we asked them for at least a 30 day or 90 day pool, that means their average duration would probably be 120 days and our yield would be going up. They actually, they will start that pool, but they're waiting for the rate to go up. They don't want to get burned at the bottom here. And so that's kind of why they're ignoring all attempts at this point to do that. But we have one of our county treasurers is running for state treasurer, Dwayne Davidson. So he understands a lot of these things that are going on with county and city and municipal entities. And uh, that's going to make it a lot easier to kind of address some of these. The state, current state treasurer tried to come in and take all this uh, authority for these investments away from all of us and move it over to the state which would have really added it, made, made it very difficult, cumbersome to do that. Uh, and also, he wouldn't have probably been asking for a lot of cash flow input on these investments from you. So we chose to fight that and we're successful in that. But one of the, one of the ways that we did that is if, if you are a pooling county, you have to have pooling professionals running that. You have to have a commitment to um, reporting software for those pools. You have to have continuing professional education that will be audited yearly. And you have to be responsive to the entities that are your, whose money you're pooling. Um, and those things get real difficult to do when you only have one person doing it. But it, it can be done, and Daryl's a master at it. And in our case here in this region, uh, Shawine County Treasurer is not. But I'm willing to take it on if I had every school uh, district in um, Schlein County say, hey, we need this. Uh, I could probably go to the county commissioners and hire somebody, but that, that might not happen either. So um, we <coughs> take the lazy man's way and put it in the state pool and away we go. We don't have to worry about uh, Umqua Bank or anybody else paying on the CDs. Uh, we don't have to worry about pooling. Um, uh, we still have to do some worksheets as far as spreading interest, but we do also offer then uh, select securities that um, you can request a longer duration on. So I could beat this drum to <laughs> We're going to stop right there while I got a dry mouth and some. Yeah, fire away. Silly questions here. Okay? No, it's not. Silly. Got a couple of them. Um, so is there our county i think collects you know collects revenue on our behalf through for debt service and things like that so when they collect it is it it's our money but typically they're going to be investing it while we're waiting for the end month to end is it possible for us to invest make a request to invest that daily like they invest it so our monies are invested daily when they're not being when there's excess cash flow at the county they're invested daily they're getting some kind of interest on it 
Do you know if it's possible for school districts to say, hey, I want my money, data well, money invested? I, I'm going to go real slow with this. Um, it is possible, but I'm not really positive I know exactly what you're asking me. But if you took, for example, Cashmere Valley Bank or Cashmere School District, and you did some kind of analysis and you knew what funds you had and what what um, with what money you had and what fund and you were able to convince me that your this fund didn't need this amount of money uh would i invest that daily for you is that what you're asking well, I, I, think I would invest 100 percent in the state pool if you asked me to yeah I, I think our county already is investing what cash they have right. in excess daily yeah but uh, not, I don't know. I don't know what cash they have of mine because they actually account for that. So I, um, they tell me how much they receive in yeah. at the end of the month. But I'm sure they're collecting in April a oh, ton right. of money. That yeah. and up to that point in that month, they yeah. probably got a ton of money there that is well, debt service money or it, it could be and it couldn't be. Uh, I don't. You know, each one of these counties have the same uh, problem that I'm sure that you, each one of the school districts have. They don't have a lot of staff. <laughs> that I, yes, I know. Um, so when they get the money, but they're getting receipts in any given month. This would be uh, the month of uh, September, and I've got property taxes that come in. They're apportioned out. School districts get about a third of it. That, in our county, you can go online at any given day and you can see what's been deposited in your account so you can tell what's in there. Oh, but the other counting systems, because you did, don't have a yeah, cool. accounting system that's online cool. that you could do that, yeah. you, don't, you don't have the ability to get that except when they pump out the reports at the end of the right, right. I can't help you with that. Yeah. Okay, well that helps. But <laughs> you're right, there is money that's sitting there. And if I know there's money sitting there, I don't have any money in the bank. Right. Zero money in the bank. Right. I'm 100% invested that's all awesome. the time. I think that's incredible. And the way, and the re, what I do is then, when you tell me you got warrants coming outstanding, I have to pull out and put on my warrant platform. If you tell me I got ACHs coming due, I pull those out. I have a. a uh, an account with which would have money in it so I always have some fl liquidity if you will but I'm always in the pool with everything so I'm always liquid and if it if you've told me and directed me to a dollar amount I'll put keep that in the pool but otherwise it's just money it's a fungible commodity my reports will tell you you got X amount and you'd have to get that report and split it out with Leah because they, they don't have the ability to pull it up daily. Yeah, yeah. yeah if that makes sense. So in each county, every county in the state of Washington is going to be a little bit different. Even the bigger ones. They can't handle that many transactions. They can't allow every school district in the King County to be calling in every day and saying, <clears throat> oh yeah, I want to invest. Right. Right. Oh, and by the way, take out. No, that just won't work. Right. But there is some flexibility too. So I think a bigger thing for you to do is when you look at exa example that Cashmere School District report, think of it in terms of how many months can I go out, and then try to buy an instrument instead. The instrument won't go up in rate, though, so you've got to be real careful, and you don't want to chase rate. Okay. Um, I'm curious because I know I know every county is different, kind of like every school district is different. But do you ever see?
Not hard. We don't do it that way. And a, and a lot of it is, you know, yeah, it's just the way it is. And uh, just to give you an idea, uh, a lot of it's budget control. Uh, right now, there are a lot of computer systems changing because a lot of them were using what's referred to as the Computex system, which was a local company actually in Chelang and Douglas County that developed a municipal accounting program and it uh, went out of the business. And so a lot of these counties, the remaining counties are having to change. We changed, uh, we saw this coming three or four years ago and so we changed immediately to a different, and we went to Texas uh, and we bought a system down there called um, uh, true automation and it's referred, the system itself is referred to as PACS and we were we uh, this included the assessor and myself as well as several other counties but, well it was really only us at, and Clark County at the time like that system because it was based out of a Texas system where they have 122 counties in Texas and um, it, they're all non-disclosure counties, if you can believe that. Um, they have what they call tax and uh, tax and assessment collection bureaus. That so, if you're a school district, you can contract with the county, or you can contract with the the cab, the collection assessment bureau. They can send your statements out, or, and and they can collect the taxes, or they can just send your statements out and you can collect the taxes or they can not do any of the above and you can send the statements out and do but they'll also assess the property for you and then you can do your own statements and your own collections that's it. but they had to have an accounting system that could handle all this and so we thought well you know well, let's take a look at that for a minute because one of the things that they're doing is they're immediately and I this watch we thought that would be viable enough for Schlang County because we wanted to go to um, an assessment where what, when you change any property, all of them are changing at one time, not one off, one by one. So, and that system allowed for us to do that. We took it to the rest of the state and we had 14 other counties want to buy that system. It was fairly expensive. It cost Chelan County quite a bit of money to do it. The other, you know, there's smaller counties that couldn't afford it, and there were bigger counties that wanted to go do something else. But again, it goes back with truth. Each one of these counties, they, you know, it's trying to get your schools to do all the same thing. Trying to get all your fifth grade teachers to do the same thing, you can't do it. And each of them have their own opinion and their kind of sometimes we're all of us we're like little chickens in the barn <laughs> so it, do you have a um oh, i'm sorry go ahead Shay. oh i was just going to say you know how you said you'd go and fight on our behalf yeah so get all of your county trainers together and go to the legislature and say change that stupid weekly deposit i was actually stuff. just yes. gonna ask that was gonna yes. be my question which that is what is it that, that well that deposit. that overnight the require the, the requirement that all okay, schools are okay. supposed to deposit every night oh. with I, I think we already got that beat. You do? I, I think we're going to, yeah, we've already got that on our, our agenda and radar on okay. um, Where are you from? Oh, Florida, Florida. 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 And they're requiring you to do it over no, next week. No, weekly. Weekly. Well, you know, daily, but we did so a waiver for weekly. So yeah. 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 yeah, I think uh, the state auditor is the one that's given yes. it the hard yes. on yes. this. It's yes. not the state treasurer. No, it's or not, not the legislature the, even. No, it's but, the but, apparently, but apparently somebody with more clout than we do has to change it. Well, we will fix that, not Thank later. I, I think by the first of the year, we will have that wired down. Yeah. And all, at best, all <laughs> it's going to require is having that statement in front of them. I can't, you know, what happens in the, that SOA thing is they hire these new young young people to come out in the audit. And one of them finds something, and my God, it just spreads like a virus. Yes. <laughs> They're just thinking they're patting themselves on the back and they'll go around there. 
<laughs> so, so just so you all are aware, this isn't just us. This happens too. That's not quite how it works. I love it. I should say that. You're on the other side of the fence. Come on, we'll back me up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But isn't that right? I mean, they find these little TV issues. Oh, yeah. Damn, they nail you. True, uh, <laughs> and then we forget to ask them whether we're doing it or not. You know, but, I know. but I think you're big. Like, that is an issue, and we have talked a couple times about that already. Thank you. I have a, I have an email chain I had that goes 20 or 30 treasures deep. So we will address that. One. Thank you. So I, does Douglas County and Grant County is Grant County doing automatic sweeps? How do you? They Grant do. County does automatic sweeps daily out of your account, so you deposit it in whatever local bank you're using, and then they sweep the account at like two thirty, three o'clock. Mm -hmm. But the account's in the county's name, though, right? Yeah. yeah. You're depositing it directly into yeah. the county account. Well, the they, they have their name. But but but. We do the same thing. If the, you would have an account in no, the Chelan School happens. District name, That's whatever what name you chose, and you put my name on it, uh -huh. and then I sweep it. So you sweep it. do they have to contact you with the amount of the fund? I no, just, just sweep it. I take everything in there. And then they record it in your local receipts every month. Every day. They need to know which fund. Well, how handy is that? Yeah, well, well, yeah but you have, you're fund. depositing it. We have. Um, two separate accounts. So you have an so ASB account and, yeah. and you have a general fund account. Right. And so they sweep them both. ASB goes to ASB, general yeah. fund general goes, fund. goes to general fund. And you so call me when, Lou, when it shows up on your <laughs> county treasure statement, it is listed at like a daily deposit. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And so you can then match those amounts up to whatever backup you have that you were given that was given to you by your staff. But they know which fund is coming from. Right. Yeah. But, but the problem is, is sometimes I don't know if transfer. it's a swept wrong mm -hmm. by the county treasurer or well, a positive two. wrong by staff. And so then if it's if it's in put the in the wrong fund, then I just have to email the county treasurer and say, please and move deposit here X Y Z from each general to ASB or vice versa. Now the only the only problem that you get in with these with with the issues that we're talking about here and we're starting to move around here now is Waterville, for example. We have Waterville in the room. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She, oh. she's, she's writing. She's not listening. <laughs> she's limited. Writing to water. I mean, I'm not sure where, you know, how, what bank branch do you have in town? Because whatever bank branch it is, I have to have an account at it in order to sweep it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If yeah. that makes sense. So I mean, if somebody's telling me that they want to use uh, yeah. Banner Bank, for example, I have to make sure that I can sweep that account so I have to open up a Banner Bank account in Wenatchee to be able to sweep it. So we usually use somebody that has a branch in that city that I'm already have a banking relationship with down here. And we, we use sweep accounts all the time. So you have accounts with numerous banks? We use sweep accounts all <laughs> the time. No, I don't have them. I do not have any Bank America. None. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I have Cashmere Valley Bank. I have. Uh, I have them. I don't necessarily use a lot of them, but I. I Cashmere Valley Bank and Key Bank and uh, Washington Federal, um, and I've got the whole county covered that way. Are you paying all the fees, or is, are the schools paying some of the transfer? Well, that's an interesting question that you're going to get a different answer from every county that you're in. Yeah. Um, did somebody say no? Yeah. Who said no? Well, we, the we're just in the starting phases of this in our county, and the county says she'll pay the fees. Yeah, we do pay the fees. Yeah, yeah. I just was curious. Um, on their, on their we, end, on their end, not on our end. Yeah, no, we we. I, I'm I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or take any credit for this at all. It is just what it is. But I've always felt like because you're you're 
you, I've got you locked in, you're mandated, you can't get away from me, you can't do anything else. There's no piece of legislation that says you can be your own treasurer. You don't have any control over anything. I got control over everything. <laughs> you can't even invest without me telling that you, you, what you can do even if you wanted to. So I pay your banking fees. And I do that in almost every case except for the ACH transaction. I think in that case, because I'd have to have so many ACH accounts for each one of the school districts, I'd probably make them pay their own. But I work to deal with Cadman Valley Bank, so they do it for free. So it all works out. But yeah, we pay. In most instances, if you're talking wire transfers, we'll bill those because the fees get kind of mm -hmm. high in those. But we, we, we can't say that's the same in every county because other counties, uh, are, you know, you go into some of these counties and they have absolutely no money uh, to spend on banking fees. And, but that's just the position that we've taken. You're going into investments, then I've got to charge you a, a bit of a, a cost involved in that. So there will be a fee there. Um, but by and large, we do it for nothing in Schlenk. But we don't have a pool either. So not more questions. You. No, you got some. Um, so don't be afraid. You call my office if you uh, you. Uh, you're in Chelan County, you know, you talk to the Teresas. They're, they're nice to you. <laughs> They'll be real courteous. If they, if you have to talk to somebody and you want to get grouched at them, talk to me. Um, so, I mean, we've got him here. Is there any other county pressing questions or things that you'd like to see? I mean, because David does work directly very closely, especially with the four in the region, but on the state level, too. Is there any other... Um, the timely deposits thing, which uh, yeah. Karen Walters and her infinite capabilities always has something on the ready for yep. for hand yep. handing yep. out. Yep. Um, but is there any other thoughts or any other things that you'd like him to work on or any other pressing issues other than That's Grant County? <laughs> yeah. No, there's nothing we can do for Grant County. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just going to grin and bear it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it.